system for excellence in leadership. And welcome to Athens, welcome to Global Thinkers Forum. I would like to particularly thank Carnegie Council for Ethics and International Affairs for this wonderful, Mr. President, this wonderful collaboration and partnership that we just launched here in Athens today. It started in mid-2014 with Devin Stewart's support and collaboration, and thank you for all these months. Our meeting today is a meeting of minds, a meeting of brilliant minds, may I say, and it is this, the outcome of this close collaboration. I will be brief because there are very important speakers ahead of me and fascinating conversations throughout the day. It's a great privilege for me to be here in Athens. Uh, it's actually a dream come true for me, a person who's devoted his career to the study of ethics and politics. I'm inspired by the presence of all of you, so many distinguished panelists and participants. So thank you for coming to spend this day with us. I must begin by thanking our host and the organizer of our program, the Global Thinkers Forum, and its founder and CEO, Elizabeth Filippoli. Thank you. Elizabeth, you've arranged wonderful hospitality, and we are most appreciative. Now, I noticed the tagline of the forum that reads, an ecosystem for excellence in leadership. So I think I speak on behalf of all of the participants in saying that we're grateful for the opportunity to be a small part of your habitat, if I can call it that. For me, it's ha very amazing that while we have an incredible knowledge now and we have crossed a threshold of knowledge that it is never done before, and for instance, we know in my own field, we know what's happening on the other side of the universe, I mean, literally, with data, and we know that the neuroscientists somehow understand now almost everything about the brain, and then you would hope that all of this would have changed our society and we're living in 2015 in a society of some kind of consideration and of very interesting. But look what's happening now. Look around what's happening. We have wars all over the place. We have population shifts. And some of these wars are in the name of religions or whatever it is, right, for this thing. hope important thinking and planning will come out of this day. I do look forward to this very much. But please let me share some orientation of this thinking. Maybe by reading a short poem. Galaxy or galaxies are small dimensions, not infinity. Neutrons are small, very small, not infinity. And what am I? A neutron to the galaxy or a galaxy to the neutron? We know that corrupt people elect corrupt governments and corrupt governments definitely they wouldn't like to change the foundation. Uh, so how could we change this vicious cycle of life in our societies so as to elevate our communities to better standards if the foundation is rotten and we elect rotten leadership? The municipality itself needs to respect the law and the rationale on which it is based. If we do not transform up our public structures to reasonable, reasonable mechanisms, we should not expect people to respect authority and their leaders. Yeah. One thing that's comforting being amongst you is that uh, I share the same anger and, and angst about uh, where this country is going. I'm not saying I'm so worried about the planet. I know very little about it to worry too much. 
Uh, I probably worry about machines taking over and preparing for becoming a pet to some artificially intelligent, uh, we don't know what we'll call them, master probably. I think that technology can be, can be helpful in democratic deliberation process. And if, we, if I say that, uh, that legitimacy of process is important now, that people must feel that they are engaged and they are listened to, Technology is a good way to achieve it. The question that we are asking is, uh, is democracy's moral privilege deserved? Money is important, but also uh, money can influence uh, politics. And uh, as uh, we know, uh, donors often make contributions uh, in anticipation of concrete payoffs uh, from political parties uh, who, or candidates when they come to power. There used to be two streams, two lines of thinking. First line was a very linear way of thinking about institutions and economic progress. That you start with modernization, then you have institutions, and then you have economic progress. And the second approach was a very mechanical one. In the globalization setting, you need a concrete set of rules and then everything works. What we have seen in recent years is that things are a bit more complex and people are revisiting this interaction between institutions and economic projects. Um, cultural rights are all about identity, are all about dignity. And I see these as a new frontier in an interconnected world where so much has to do with being allowed to be recognition of who you are and being, being respected for the, digni the dignity that you have as a person. Um, the cultural right that is the most important and the key to everything is the right to education. It was mentioned before. Um, I see that as the queen of all cultural rights, and that's where everything starts. Um, we were the first uh, to organize and try organize uh, a new polity according to democratic rules. The first constitution ever in the Orient, in the Ottoman East, was the Pythagoras Constitution of 1822, just a few months after the break outbreak of the Greek uh, revolution, that's the one reason. And the constitutional history of uh, Greece uh, uh, corresponds to the history of the new Greek state itself from the very start for all the breaks and reversals. Governments sometimes undertake actions that impose liabilities on their populations, for example by undertaking loan agreements, create an obligation to repay, or by undertaking immoral or illegal acts that create an obligation to make compensation or restitution. Under what condition do these liabilities assumed by governments generate legal or more liabilities for the population at large? So the topic of this panel is the relationship between democracy and collective liability. What do we mean by that? Well, one of the most important attributes that we all have as moral agents is the ability to incur liabilities and to be held accountable. So for example, as a moral agent, I can make a promise to you. And having made that promise, I am now liability. I am now liable to undertake what I promised you to do. So one of the most important uh, challenges in uh, Western societies of the 21st century is the training of citizens to make proper and efficient financial decisions. According to recent empirical uh, studies, financial illiteracy is a big social problem since most people have a large or even huge uh, gap in basic financial concepts and tools. Globalization, financial liberalization, and the gradual transfer of financial decisions taking from the state to the individuals made this problem even bigger as noisy citizens are exposed in excessive risks and trapped in an efficient allocation of financial resources. Um, this is the case of governments uh, accumulating debt um, through which they fund activities uh, or actions that are against the best interest of their people, um, provided that these governments are not democratic. Uh, sometimes we've had governments that have used funds that have borrowed in order to um, fund
finance uh, arming themselves in order to confront their people. The South African apartheid regime was such a case. Uh, Is it moral in general for an individual to pay taxes? So uh, we will have full red tape uh, welfare state. Would there would be more if ethical if charity instead of coercive tax, if, uh, tax system help people uh, that they are in need? Well, I believe that the individualistic argument loses because on uh, material grounds. The more dense a population grows in the planet, the more externalities are produced, so more collective action is needed, Gregory. No one lives in the cabin in the woods. Now, everyone is independent by others and some, uh, some forms of collective decisions should we take. Even if these actions create liabilities to everyone, uh, even for future generations, that by definition do not choose to take the burden of our debts. And I think that, uh, um, that we, need, uh, we need a bit of the input of some political philosophy here because uh, this has been a very important subject especially since the Second World War and the, the issue of the German guilt, uh, etc. In the midst of the Nuremberg uh, trials, uh, Karl Jaspers, who is a prominent German philosopher, told to his fellow citizens, a people must answer for his polity. Like Joel said, it was a, a dream come true for us to be here in Greece. Um, I made uh, the comment yesterday when I met with uh, the, the faculty and students from Dewey that um, I am such a Greek philosophy dork that I actually, true story, had this, this painting down here with Socrates on my, as my screensaver for about 10 or 20 years. My story is... Uh about my time as a British diplomat, I was a British diplomat for 15 years, um, and one of my postings was to the British mission to the United Nations, where I dealt with sanctions on Iraq, uh, the containment of Iraq's uh, uh, economy and weapons production ability during the Saddam Hussein years. And one of the uh, most crucial areas that we were sanctioning was, of course, oil production. And um, oil was a huge issue. And there was an awful lot of pressure from British oil companies and multinational oil companies, which are in fact not really British, they're not really anything, um, to have access to Iraq's oil. Um, I'm not and sure when, when I, I was, it was the first time I, I faced uh, corruption. I suppose that it was when um, I was born in the clinic that uh, my parents were asked to give the doctor more money in, or, in order to be in the in the room. But I didn't want to share any corruption story because uh, I have, I've seen, you know, all my life in this environment, different corruption stories. So there is not one specific. I have achieved to be free of that and actually be able to speak about it and sit here before you and uh, actually try to come up with my own definition. We have so uh, an overestimated, maybe, perception about what is corruption about an institution or um, an agent who exercises the institution. And uh, I think that we must see the bigger image about what is corruption. Uh, another issue is, uh, especially since we are in Greece, has been the financial crisis. Financial crisis has brought on the surface the accountability and responsibility of the financial world. Should uh, we now follow these simple ethical per percepts, precepts, both in selecting our leaders and in choosing to become a leader? This thought should trouble all of us in the current situation Greece is in. I thought of the Greek crisis. And um, here in this, um, in this conference hall, we had um, a very nice discussion back in 2011 about the crisis. And myself and everybody else in the room, I think, we tend to be very negative against the governments that, um, you know, borrowed all these tons of money. So how could you, you know, be in charge of the country and create such a debt? But we tend to forget that besides 
the government asking for money, there were banks lending the money, and there were some people who were uh, ranking the credibility of uh, you know, the country with AAA. I would like to thank all our speakers, our moderators, for the wonderful work that you've done, and I would like to thank you, Joel, thank you. and Carnegie Council. I hope that we realized your dream to be in Athens in a nice way, in a productive way. And I would like to hope that we will continue this collaboration. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. And I suppose I can just, on behalf of the entire Carnegie Council delegation and many of the people who enjoyed this day, thank you, Elizabeth. But people were very willing to see this event take place because they know the timeliness and the importance of such a conversation. So I thank everyone for putting their efforts and energy and supporting this event. Thank you. Thank you. system for excellence in leadership.